Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. How are you this morning, Christos? I am good. Did you have a good holiday? It was a good one. Uh, the weather was fair. It was good. Yesterday was nice and warm. Fair. When I say warm, it was like 81, which is great. I think it's going to be 85 today. And in terms of, uh, you know, uh, metric, we're going to be about 27, 29 degrees Celsius. For the rest of the world that doesn't understand Fahrenheit, which I, don't, I still don't understand. I'm just copying what my I'm just copying what my weather apps. I can only translate like a few, a few. Like if you say it's 85, I'm like, okay, that's in the early 30s or something. And then if you say 70, I'm like, okay, that's 20, 21, 22. That's good. And that's all I need to know. And then if it's 40, I know that it's about to snow. So these are the these are the numbers I need to worry about. And the temperature in the house is always at around 65. So. Uh, you know, if you ever move from metric to imperial or freedom units, as uh, JP calls them, then just be aware <laughs> that the uh, translation is there. But yeah, it was good. It was good. It's good. Spent some time with the kids. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't need it after the, the full week of build, man. It was insane how much stuff we had and how busy it was. So I'm glad that uh, there was some downtime. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Well, it was... Uh, it was horribly hot here last week. It wasn't so bad this weekend. Okay. So, so, okay, because you are in South Carolina, so please tell us what that translates to in terms of uh, Fahrenheit. And I'll try to translate for our European friends. Or um, well, so it was like 92, 94F. Oh, God damn. Uh, last week. It was nice over the weekend, though. It was like in the 70s and breezy. Yeah. It was nice. I could, I could deal with that. How do you not have a pool in your house? I mean, with all that heat, I'm surprised that you haven't invested in the pool. Or do you have so I, got three kids. I, got, I got three kids. <laughs> I don't want to deal with the pool. No. Yeah, um, They're quite young, right? A, so it's, it's a bit of an issue. Yeah. yeah. There's a lake. There's a lake uh, right next door. So oh. um, part of the problem is the way the backyard is sloped. We can't, mm -hmm. can't really put And there's a bunch of trees. True. I don't know. I mean... There are people in our neighborhood with pools, but not many. Okay. Wow. I think it's most. I think it's just because of the way it's sloped. But do you have to? Do you have to pay a tax? Like in, in Greece, it was it was considered a luxury investment or something, and the the tax on swimming pools was insane. Is that the same case here as well? No. I don't think so. I mean, we have to pay property tax on our house, like in our land. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if a pool would be considered enough of an improvement. Oh, to, to jack up end the up making to jack up the taxes. I don't know. Good morning, Rocket Man from San Diego. Rocket Man, nice. San Diego must be like, nice and warm as well. Like Elton John. Um, I went to San Diego once. It was beautiful. I loved it. Also because it was middle of the summer here, so it was like I left and it was ninety five, and I got off of the plane and it was seventy four and breezy. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were sitting in traffic, and I thought. This is why everybody drive. This is why traffic is so bad because everybody's driving slow because they're staring out the window at how beautiful the sky is. Thinking, yeah. if I only had a rocket ship and I could get off of this place. Rocket ship, man. Yeah, it's not too far away to have commercial flights. I think uh, Virgin. Uh, is it Virgin? It's not Virgin Atlantic. It's Virgin. What's that? What's the um, Galactic? Virgin right? Galactic. Yeah. They tested successfully, <laughs> right? So. There it yeah. Comes. Uh, cool. Frost Tarts is asking, where does 45, what, what does 45 to refer? Well, it's, it's a good story, right? <laughs> and I was thinking, well, we for... <clears throat> I was thinking, last year, this time, we're thinking about what we're going to do as a team. And we're starting creating the idea of streaming and coming up with a program to help reach out to you guys. So uh, part of that was the naming. So I'll let you take the name today, JP. <laughs> um, so we, when we first started the show, well, so we started and our, we were creatively named uh, MSID Dev. Oh, God, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and our boss, who is, I guess, could we call him a creative? I think that's probably the best way to he's describe it. He's creative. Him. I mean, he's got in his, yeah. you know, it's his style. We started... We started thinking like, well, we should be a little bit more, let's be a little bit more fun. So we named it, at first it was going to be like 401, like unauthorized. Um, it's, a bit, it's a little bit negative, right? Unauthorized. Yeah. Unauthenticated. And, uh, Are you fixing 
Is she your office? No, I'll tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> is that is that a surprise they had for me? It's one of them, yeah. One of them, okay. <laughs> um, it's gonna be an interesting stream. Then. It's actually it's actually the first time it started all day. But um, anyway, so f- we started the show at 10 a.m. Eastern. Because mm-hmm. I live on the East Coast, so we started for at 10 a.m. Eastern, which is 7 a.m. for My Christmas. Time. Yeah. So we uh, the, the there's an HTTP code, an HTTP code four two five four. Um, <laughs> it's a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. Um, anyway, it's I don't not know. your son, uh, is it? Did, did he come out? Did he come about a hammer and then he's trying his skills in DIY? No, no, no. no it's, not he's, it's not my. It's not my son. He's at school, but. Uh, no, so 425 was the HTTP code for status code for too early. Yes. And for, way too early for Christmas because it was 7 a.m. And uh, yeah, so that would be it. Yep, 425, HTTP 425. Never, um, never agree on a time until you check the time zone. That's a very hard lesson uh, learned early on in my career. <laughs> and then uh, Redmond, Redmond's area code is 425. Yeah, and then like six months, and then six months later, I realized that's actually my house number too. It just had never clicked until months and months later. So, it's not mine. so I'm not forty five. <sighs> um, so anyway, speaking of the house at four two five, we're getting a new carpet put in. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so this morning, you know, they told us they were going to come today, and we're like, all right, cool. So we were gonna, <clears throat> we were gonna, um, the carpet people should just be here, like. Eight or eight thirty. Mm-hmm. Well, nobody showed up, and so it was like ten o'clock, ten fifteen, and then one guy showed up, and he's like, "Well, he's like, I think the rest of my crew, I think the rest of my crew is going to be here tomorrow." Oh. We're like, "They? Just, what do you mean you think? Like they just left you behind? What the? <laughs> what, what the hell kind of place? No what man left behind." Yeah, so they, I guess they decided that, like, I don't know. So just this, it's just one guy. I kind of feel bad because I'm like. Well, I got to help you move furniture and stuff. So, right. um, so yes, yeah, so I don't know. It's going to be an interesting week. I hope that uh, I hope the rest of his crew comes. So that um, I mean, one guy will do the whole house. That would be an interesting experience. Well, it's not the whole. I mean, we're only doing like the downstairs because wow. we had uh, we have like like the downstairs has like four rooms that have carpet and there's tile throughout. And we were going to redo the whole floor. But the stuff they were going to put in is a is a quarter of an inch tall, right? And the tile that's coming out is a half an inch tall. Oh, there's going to be a difference in the level. So they would have had to somebody would have had to go to every single door jam uh-huh. and all of the molding and redo yeah. like and drop it down lower. And that was going to be prohibitively expensive. Mm. And um, and we talked about raising up the floors, but that was going to be pretty much just as bad. So we're like, well, you well, put plywood like underneath, right? If you need to do that, the problem is that yeah. you apply the whole house. And now wood is it's extremely and expensive. And cost a fortune. You might as well just yeah. put tiles all over the house. <laughs> yeah, it was like a four. It was like a four. Uh-huh. A four dollar piece of plywood cost like seventy three dollars yes. now or something. Yes, that's an investment. That like, Screw Bitcoin. Yeah. Just invest in wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Frosh Tarts asks if we have any tips for motivating ourselves. Well, oh, you're God. here with the king of motivation, Mr. Matskus. So, Christos, how do you motivate yourself? How do I motivate myself? Fear of failure, my friend. FOMO, I suppose, or making sure that I stay on top of my game. I think that's a, that's a good motivation. Um, especially working with JP, who's like he knows everything. It's just extremely annoying because. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very sweet. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know you felt that yeah. way. <laughs> JP knows everything, so I need I need to up my game and catch up very quickly. Motivation, I it depends. Are you talking about you know personal life motivation, gym motivation, you know work motivation? It's just um, as I said, for, for me, it's it's making sure that I stay relative and. I build my brand. Like, what happens if Microsoft shuts down tomorrow? What happens if I lose my job? How will I be able to, you know, be relevant and find another job if I need to? And I think that's it. So, um, and also it makes me happy, you know, learning new stuff and um, staying up to date. I think it's it makes me happy. Trying trying new shiny things, trying old no shiny things, and seeing how I fare. <laughs> 
Uh, well, yeah. if you're into old, if you're into old things, we got you today. Oh yes, oh yes. Windows servers, all sorts of stuff. So anyway, so the other thing I was going to tell you this weekend. Oh, so uh, yes, so Saturday we went to, with my daughter uh, oh. for her birthday. We went Happy up birthday. to this park. Yeah, we went to this park with my family. They're going to come mm -hmm. and hang out. And uh, we got home. Everything was cool. And I dropped my phone in the driveway. Oh, yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> so your tweet. <laughs> Pixel 4 XL, which was probably my the, was probably the best phone I've had. Like, uh, the Nokia 1520 was hands down the best phone ever. But yes. the... The Pixel 4 XL is probably the best one I've, I've ever. I mean, just it was just everything. I liked everything about it. And you can't buy them anymore. Like, you can only buy them used. And uh, I was reading about the Pixel 5, and it was awful. Everybody said it was awful. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of like, well, I don't really want to do that. And so I used an, a Note 20. The big Note 20 is my regular phone. <laughs> so I started looking at buying a new phone. Which, of course, my wife was like, why on earth do you buy another phone? Uh-huh. So Why I ended not? up with, I ended up with, uh, I'll give you a hint. <clears throat> uh -oh. So, okay. Yeah, let me, I'll show you. So I, I ended up buying this thing, which I have to say is, is kind of, it's, it's, it's so narrow. Look at how narrow it is, right? Well, see it? Wait, 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 wait. Let me see. You oh, see it? it? It's extremely narrow. Is that a Nokia? No, it's like not a, a Lumia something. Well, what's cool is. Oh, it's bam. a phone. phone. <laughs> I knew you were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait. So anyway, no, no, I, I, I am excited. I am excited. But then again, are you going to be using it in unfolded mode or folded mode? What's the, your default now? Well, uh, so okay. So the first thing I've used it in folded mode almost entirely, right? Okay. See, see, I knew it. Right. Um, but the square. like, it's like, it's like it, it's square? almost like a perfect square when it's unfolded. Wow. I mean, I, I don't think it's a complete. I don't think it's a perfect square. Okay, but I think it's close. So, the, so the screen is is folding. Mm -hmm. like yeah, in fact, you can see. Deal. There's even like a little crease. It's kind of hard to see. See yeah. it? Just barely. Yeah. 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 Um, Love it. But I don't know. Like, so I had the duo, and the duo was cool. But I like the fact that this has a front screen makes it useful. Wait, wait. <clears throat> you had the duo. I thought you kept it when you exchange it for your other phone. Did you sell it in the end? No, I still got it. You still got it. And if anybody would like to buy it, <laughs> if, anybody would, if anybody would like a Surface Duo that's been lightly used, just ping me and let me know. Um, Aiden, Aiden Ernso says, Galaxy Folds. I give it one week before it breaks, Bolt says. <laughs> Thanks, Webmonger Bolt. says two weeks before it breaks. Uh, okay, yeah, well, so, so what are we going to, so what do we want to, all right, we'll take bets on it. So two Ooh. weeks. It's at our high. That's our high mark right now. So that's I just have to over under two weeks. So, so I'm going to put it rolling. back in the box and use my other phone for two weeks, and they'll roll back out. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be broken. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Be careful what you bet on because there's uh, this workaround. You need to be ex uh, explicit about two weeks of constant usage. So this is going to be your go-to phone. That's your main one now. That's my main phone. Service is on that phone. So we're going to try it for a few weeks so, and see how it so goes. Next question: Does it have the word profile on it? Yeah. Oh, exactly. you put the work profile already? Yeah, I thought, well, why not, right? Well, when in I, Rome. I, I kept my, my personal phone as personal, so I have a separate uh, phone. For, I know it's stupid, but I have a separate phone for work because I didn't want to put... Like, this time I decided not to, and it actually keeps a work-life balance a little bit better. I don't check my emails after work. So what I have is um, I have a schedule so that at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, work profile shuts off, and... Mm -hmm. I can. I'm okay with that. I can get down with that. That's good. But st so still both, having, the, having the option to actually check it, like you know, switch on the profile, whereas on the phone I have to intune it. On on the iPhone I have to intune it and add it and go through the whole shebang of adding it. I'm like, nah, I don't want to. Yeah. I might not do. Anyway. Um, well, and uh, then, how much does so, that you back? Twelve hundred. Eleven. Oh, I'm not. I'm. I'm. There's no. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> it, I'm it's, not going to uh, tell you. It's new. It's not secondhand. It is new. I bought it from Best Buy actually, because Best Buy had a pretty good. Uh, they had a pretty good trade in um, a deal, so I took a bunch of phones that I had in the closet and just. I was like, "How many?" I opened them up. How many can I get for these? You know. You can't even like twenty phones like in a bucket. Tell, tell me what I can get for these. 
It's like go, it's like when you used to take your games to GameStop to trade them yes. in, you know. And they're like, oh, here's a brand new. Here's oh, here's Madden twenty one. We'll give you about <laughs> three, give you three fifty for it, you know, <laughs> three fifty. So did they actually so, end up giving you money as well, <laughs> plus the phone because you have so many phones on the on your <laughs> no, no no no. There was a cap, uh, so a cap. I ended up getting a six hundred dollar credit though. So I'll take that. Damn. But, so yeah. I, I guess it's around six hundred. They send you back. Sure, we can say that. <laughs> You know I can go to Best Buy and check for the deal, yeah. right? Okay. I know you can. Anyway, there's a question. Um, there's a question. How did we transfer? How did I transfer Authenticator? Okay, so Authenticator is probably there are three things that I would do because I switch phones all the time, um, mostly for like tests and stuff, whatever. Like Android uh -huh. 12 yeah. came out, so testing. I was like, oh, that's cool. yeah. His testing is like losing, breaking, or uh, upgrading impulsively. So there were three things: the transfer text messages. There's a really cool app called SMS Backup Pro or something. So I do that one. Mm -hmm. Um, that backs up all your SMS to like OneDrive or Google Drive or whatever, and then you can pull them down the other phone, which is awesome. Nice. Apparently, I've sent seventy-two thousand text messages over the years. But how much whatever. space does that take, and why are you keeping all of them? Seven, uh, seven point one gigs, I think it said. I don't know why. I don't why honestly. You, don't, you have them on. Know. If you have them on OneDrive, can you actually uh, open them on OneDrive, or can you download the file it's just and open an, it? It's just, a, it's just an XML file. There you go. Why the hell are you? Oh, you can write an app for it. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So, yes. and then transfer signal, okay. which is the only yes. thing I don't like about signal is that you can't have multiple phones attached to the same signal. Yes. Um, you have to transfer. And so that's kind of annoying. But uh, so authenticator, authenticator is weird because I had to, so you signed it with work profile, with company profile, the company profile app. And then, um, when you sign in there, you still need something. Like you still have to have some sort of extra phone or device or something that you can sign in on. Um, so you do that like to get your multi-factor. And then when you open the Authenticator app, it was it's sort of like already there. And I yeah. think because we are hybrid here at Works, so we've got like hybrid MFA. I'm pretty sure that because we're hybrid MFA, um, we ended up in a spot where I still have to scan the QR code. Mm -hmm. So QR codes, you love QR codes. I'm pretty sure you're excited about it. <laughs> so I had to go to our, like, I have to go to like our registration thing and, uh -huh. and sign in there, but then that's it. Like, and then it works. So yes. that, that part was pretty good. I mean, the thing is you can go to aka.ms whack my or aka.ms whack MFA setup, and it will take you to all your devices. Um, so it'll take you to all of your, like, everything you've got registered for MFA and this works for everybody, not just for not nice. just Microsoft, obviously. So it's aka.ms forward slash MFA. So I'm going to type this, we'll put it up on the screen, MFA setup. Uh, and you can see all of the devices you have. You can add new devices. You can remove devices. You can do whatever. Uh, good morning, Robertables. Um, yeah. Robertables. The, uh, fun with you. Yeah. My, yeah, we're getting new carpet put in and the guy's crew didn't show up with him. So only he came and he was like, I guess the rest of my crew will be here tomorrow. And I feel really bad for him. Cause I'm like, how do they just, how do people just say, I'm not going to go to work today. No eh. man left behind. Right. So Pro life tips um, here says webmonger. By the way, we have a question on, um, actually developers. So before we jump into the CA stuff, let's, let's answer this one quickly. So Pratik 0508, interesting, uh, name. So currently I'm doing ASP.NET web forms, WPF and WCF to become a .NET developer. Any tips to practice more doing Microsoft Learning Pass? So uh, I'll, take, I'll take it and then JP can, uh, can chime in as well. But from my perspective, it's great that you're learning ASP.NET. Love it. Uh, great stuff. Uh, one question I would have is why are you looking into these slightly older technologies like web forms, WPF and WCF are... Uh, not as much in demand, at least on our side of the world. Now, I'm not saying that they're not on your side of the world. I don't know where you are, but uh, usually uh, most companies will expect good knowledge of .NET, right? Full .NET. And then uh, I would expect people to be more uh, aligned towards APIs rather than WCF. And uh, for desktop apps, I don't think web forms, or not web forms, wind forms or WPF are used as much. I think... Um, WPF is probably still relevant, uh, and I would say UWP if you're creating desktop apps. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of free stuff on uh, MS Learn. So if you look at Microsoft Learn, 
you'll find a lot of learning uh, content there. Then there's also uh, Pluralsight, there's also Udemy. Is it Udemy? How do you pronounce it? Udemy? Udemy? Udemy, right? And you know, there's YouTube as well. And yeah, GRPC is way cutting edge, man. Rocket Man, it's way too far. I mean, if Pratik is looking at web forms and WPF, jumping to GRPC is like jumping 20 years of technology, right? So that's it. By the way, in saying that, web forms, WPF, and WCF will still run on .NET Core um, or .NET 5. So it doesn't mean that they're totally irrelevant but I think you'll, you'll get more chances to get a better job if you have a good grasp of .NET and then learning ASP.NET Core and uh, slightly more modern frameworks. What about, what's your take, JP? Um, I love WCF, it's very close to my heart. It, I think it's because- <laughs> It's I think XML, it's because I know why you say that. WCF, it's because it reminds me of B2C because yes. it's 10% yes. it's code and 90% <laughs> configuration. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, WCF was a really, really cool tech. I think it was like so, you, it was so flexible. It was almost like inflexible because you, the only way it could be flexible is if you learned it all the way yep. through. Yeah. Um, so if I was going to learn, like, if I was going to learn .NET today, I'd mm -hmm. probably focus on .NET Web Stack. So Web API, uh, MVC, Razor, all of those yep. sort of the, the modern web tech, if you want to call it that. GRPC yep. is a part of that, but probably not until later. Mm -hmm. Um I think um, uh, I've. I don't know if I've. Desktop? I don't know if I've ever written a desktop. Maybe once. No, well, twice. I don't hardly ever do desktop apps. I don't know why. I've just never worked at a place where that's been a, a requirement, and I don't know why. I've almost done almost exclusively web the vast mm -hmm. majority of my career. So we did a bunch of backend stuff, and we've done services and stuff. But I don't think I've ever done. I did a Windows eight app. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, remember so that was those fun. Days? We Metro, did connect. Metro. We did connect for yep. the uh, for because um, the place I used to work was a construction firm, and they wanted people to go up to this little kiosk where they had a screen, mm -hmm. and they could t do a touch screen to look at the uh, uh, plans, like the PDFs of the blueprints and different plans for sub assemblies and all that. Yep. And back then, touch screens were super expensive, and like a huge like TV size touch screen was prohibitively expensive. Okay. And you think you're on a construction site, people have tools in their hands, they've got gloves and concrete and they're, you know, all sorts of stuff everywhere. So we thought, well, let's try this with Connect instead so people could stand there and they could zoom and pinch to zoom with their hands. It was really quite fun. But that was all, um, that was all Windows 8, what were they called? Metro apps? I mean, Metro apps, yeah. <clears throat> a lot of the XAML, I guess the XAML I learned sort of kept going. Yes. Um, the, the, XAML, the XAML that you learned back then, it still has relevance today because MAUI and, you know, Xamarin and WPF and Windows uh, UWP apps will still have a, you know, a flavor of that same XAML. So if you understand XAML, then it has good applicability from WPF all the way to MAUI. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think, I think web, with web, the world is your oyster. Yes. To understand how to build web services and build web apps, um, I think, and especially too, like look at things like Blazor, like Blazor is moving to desktop and that sort of thing, right? So um, I think for me personally, I, I tend to spend a lot more time website mm -hmm. uh, than like UI and desktop side, but I have had to learn a lot of JavaScript. Even, even though .NET is sort of primary thing I do a lot of work in, I've had to learn a lot of JavaScript. I've had to learn a lot of JavaScript frameworks, you know, the Reacts and Angulars and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Not that I'm very good at them, but uh, I good think it's- <clears throat> Good understanding of the principles and how they work, right? Besides the change yeah. so fast that what you learned six months ago may not be relevant today. I would say yeah. one backend language, one server-side language, .NET, if that's your poison, it can be Node, it can be uh, oh. Java, and then one front-end language, which, which fortunately or unfortunately, it is what it is, and it is JavaScript. So JavaScript will take you a long way. I would say invest in JavaScript as well. You can't build websites without JavaScript, to be honest. Even if you drew everything in ASP.NET, you still need to double a little bit with JavaScript for a better UI experience for users. So uh, yep. you need to invest in that one as well, I'm afraid. But all of that, yeah. it's kind of fun. Yeah. So I think, and I think too, like, 
learning sort of the, especially fundamentals of HTTP, um, fundamentals of web and how it works and fundamentals of web servers and networking and all that, that's really helped a lot over the years. Uh, even though it's not development stuff specifically, yep. I think understanding how your software is going to be delivered and, and all of the things, all the things that it takes, all the, the traversal it has to go to in order to get into front of your user. Yep. Um, it makes learning it a lot easier. It makes debugging it a lot easier. And um, yeah, so yeah. I learned .NET at the beach with a book called Beginning, or was it called Beginning VB.NET? I was like 18. Um, and it was a big red, you know those works books that were red? I think it was works. Um, and I just read it cover to cover. And it was, it did all the samples and did all the examples. And it was, um, I don't do any VB now, but I did back then. And it was really useful for what it was like, uh, you know, for what it was, for what it set out to do. Like I learned a lot about various topics and, yeah. um, and the guy on the cover had really kind of funny hair. It was very, very nineties books, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think there are definitely some, uh, a lot of fundamentals, a lot of concepts and things like that make it make it easier so. yes and the fundamentals are the same right you know, yeah. loops and arrays and everything else is just a, the syntax that yeah. changes from one language to another so uh, and i came from learning databases i started on sql and t-sql and so for me seeing classes and stuff i think that uh that helped so hey <laughs> bald bearded in dean regarding msft azure academy what what bbb is here yes Oh, Dean Cephala, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Who's Dean Cephala? Yeah. Oh, Dean Cephala. Oh, he's he's done a bunch of he's done a bunch of stuff. How come I don't know this guy? I don't know. He's good. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, if you say so, I'll take it. But I'm surprised that I haven't come across his content or material before. Yep, he's a he's a fast track engineer actually. So, hey, bald bearded builder, it's good to see you here today. I haven't seen you in a while. It's my favorite streamers that also do identity. Yeah, from time to time. How you doing, buddy? Where? Where? <laughs> so right. So we're gonna do some. Are we gonna do some work today, or are we just gonna? I mean, we can just chat. It's fine. I don't care. Do you want to build a CA? Yeah. See, I can even sing it. It's uh, from Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I am banned. I am banned from the channel. Uh, where's like, the? Likely, I'm a co-host. Uh... <laughs> so, okay. Mute. <laughs> Muted. You, you're in. You're in timeout for that one. I don't know if we can. I don't know. Okay. All right. You're back now. Okay. Um. Thank you. So, I said VB in the past. Bald bearded builder. VB with a B. So, all right. Let's do some CA stuff. So uh, I mentioned that the VB.net book. The people had one of the guys had funny hair. Mm -hmm. and it's, that's oh, pretty funny it. hair. That's pretty. It. I think it's kind of '90s hair, right? Uh -huh. Like people don't really do that much anymore, I don't think. But I, so yeah, this was this was the book. Um, it was and it was pretty good. I wonder if their names are in order. If this uh, that's his name is Jonathan Croslin. But it was a really really good book, and it's thirteen dollars on whatever website this is. So excuse me, they're still selling it. Well, I think it's a used one. It's on a place called Thrift Books, so I'm assuming it's got to be used. But yeah. only a little bit different, just by one letter. <laughs> BBB. Yeah, just a little different. Anyway, um, CAs. CAs. Uh, certificate so, authorities. Why are we looking at that? First of all. So one of the things, things we talk things. about. Yeah, so one of the things we talk about a lot is oh, when you create an app registration, you should create a secret because your mm -hmm. app needs to identify itself back to Azure AD. Yes. And because we're doing these things live, we're always like, eh, just use a secret for dev. For dev, a secret is okay. Just make sure you protect the, uh, make sure you protect the, uh, make sure you protect the secret. Um, but you, we always say too, you should use a certificate in production. And there are two reasons why. Uh, for the one side, on the one, on the one side, with a certificate, um, mm -hmm. you don't end up in a place where um, you're ever sending a secret across the wire, right? Yes. So the 
in the case of a client secret, it's a symmetric key. So we send that key over the wire. We send that secret over the wire and, uh, you know, it's TLS and it's, it's a secure pipe, but you're still sending the secret and it's a shared secret. And that's it. It's basically a long password at the end of the day. With a certificate, we do things a little bit differently where we, instead of sending the private key over the wire, which of course we would want to do, instead we sign an assertion. We sign a bit of, we essentially create our own JWT mm -hmm. and we send that JWT into Azure AD as a credential. And it's just that one time. Nice. So, so Azure AD has the public key and can verify the signature the same way that you verify the signature in the opposite direction when you get a token from Azure AD. Um, Azure AD can verify that with the token. Right. We can verify the token with the public key. So it's cool because your private key never leaves your machine, never leaves the box that it's on. And uh, especially in like larger places, um, some places have much better certificate hygiene than others. And so some yes. places have lots of process and lots of human process um, uh, in place for getting certificates issued, but then also for knowing when they expire and rotating them and how do they get access and um, plus two, you get some OS level stuff you can do with those keys. So you can protect the keys with like windows authentication, or you can protect it with like, you can put it in certain places, uh, in the Linux file system that are secured and only available to certain users, certain users being users that are maybe running your web server or running whatever. Right. Yep. Um, so we're going to, going to do, we got two things. We'll do one of them today. We'll do the other one on Friday. So I guess we'll make this the week of certificates because this is a short week, week of certificates. Right? Yes. <laughs> So like a, we'll, we'll do a, since it's a short week, holiday and all. Um, so we're going to, we're going to get our CA and everything stood up today. Uh, so this is our certificate authority. So certificate authorities are just that. They are um, uh, essentially the authority that issues a certificate. You so might be familiar with your own authority then. Correct. No, it's my own authority. Nice. So whereas DigiCert and Symantec, well, not Symantec anymore, but uh, other things are um, public certificate authorities, like all the ones out on the internet that sign, that issue certificates for, you know, TLS or SSL websites. You can also have your own CA uh, that yeah. issues certificates within your own organization. And in Windows, we have a Windows CA. There are different CAs available for different OSs and whatever. But for Windows, they're kind of cool because for Windows, you can issue certificates with all sorts of different kinds of templates. And if you're using Windows domains for people to log in on their machines or whatever, um, there's some pretty good integration there for requesting certificates and getting certificates for users for various purposes, like, uh, encrypting their disc or whatever. I mean, it's a little, it's getting a little old, a little bit dated now. Um, but that's what it does. And can, can you replace yeah. it with any other services? Like can you use Keyvault or some other other service to issue certificates if you don't want to use windows for that? Uh, no, no. I mean, you don't have to use windows for issuing certificates, but um, you need some kind of a CA to issue a cert at the end of the day. So and right now they... there's no, mm -hmm. there is no CA as a service in Azure right now. Right. So if you're using Keyvault, you need, still need to create and store the certificate and there's no, there's no certificate chain, right? Like, okay. So you don't, you only manage the, the final key or the top level key, right? So Keyvault does have CA integration. So what, okay. what with CA integration, you can send a, a signing request to Keyvault. And when Keyvault is integrated with a CA, which right now it's integrated with DigiCert, mm -hmm. then it will send that CSR, that certificate signing request, which we're going to create here in a minute. It sends that over to DigiCert via API, and then uh, DigiCert will issue you a certificate. Nice. Um, but those are public CA signed certificates, mm -hmm. right? Everyone privately signed. Um, well, and, and you don't have, I mean, you can use either one, right? Because yep. as long as it's a, as long as it's like a trustworthy CA and of course, DigiCert is one of the biggest ones. So they're probably one of the more trusted ones. Um, as long as it's a trusted CA, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter where it comes from for our purposes today, uh, because the trust is, is fairly limited. What about, uh, let's encrypt? Would that work? Um, yeah, that would work. So let's encrypt this free because Rocket Money is saying money and he's absolutely right. Yeah. And there was a exactly. whole blog post by Troy Hunt and uh, Scott Helm from the UK. They talked about the the validity and uh, the value for money when it comes to issuing certificates and getting certificates from authorities like DigiCert, DigiCert or doing your own thing. So if you want to do your research about which one is better, then have a look at that. But 
just because you pay money doesn't mean that it's always better. Yeah, I mean, there's and there's like lots of different things that go into like lots of different usages for a certificate. So yeah. like Let's Encrypt, of course, the primary use for Let's Encrypt is to create certificates that you can use for server to server stuff for TLS yes. for yep. getting the little getting the little secure padlock in your on your web server. Mm -hmm. And the thing about that, because it's a public CA, mm -hmm. that's where public CAs make the most sense is that, well, you are going to come use your browser from who knows where mm -hmm. with and I need to make sure that those routes that that uh, for the, the websites that I'm I'm securing that the trust chain can be verified all the way up. So like yep. Windows, Windows, Linux, everybody ships with their own set of base, um, their own set of certificate authorities. Mm -hmm. And they are the sort of publicly accepted ones that people have said, well, these, have, these people follow these pathways and they follow these protocols and blah, blah, blah. So we know they're issuing certificates to the right folks. And that's not bulletproof because we've seen it happen with a few places where certs get issued where they really shouldn't be. Um, and that's important because that's sort of the central trust mm -hmm. that is central to the internet. So my phone has a set of root certs and your phone and your website or your web, uh, your web browser on your computer on whatever, they all have this sort of root set of, of trusted root certificates and those will sign certs all the way down a chain so that windows or whatever your OS is can follow that chain all the way back up and say, okay, I know the certificate was signed by DigiCert or whoever, right? Um, at work or in like in, in like larger enterprise, some folks have their own CAs and so they sign their own they sign their own certificates for various reasons. It could be to identify a user, it could be to identify a web server uh, for things like TLS, mm -hmm. and maybe it's internal, right? Okay. And so it's only an internal website. It's never going to be used externally, and so that because they manage the machine, they might push certificates out to all the machines that join the domain. Yep. So now your machine has this new trusted certificate. And that trusted root, in addition to being the internet-wide trusted roots, it's also the trusted root of um, uh, it's also the trusted root of your enterprise. So, in fact, since I have this up, I'll pull it up here. So, uh, this is a VM, which we'll, we'll get into all this here in a minute. So, this machine, uh, you'll you need notice to zoom in significantly if you can. I don't know how to zoom MMC. I don't know if it's doable. Uh, you might want to use um, uh, the Windows Zoom. Let's try Zoom 250. Oh, uh, look at that. Maybe that'll work. You found a way. I think it's better, but it's not perfect, but it is better than it was before. So every on every machine, you can go find your, your certificate authorities. And that's also Firefox. Linux and Mac. Yeah, Firefox keeps its own store for the browser, uh, but typically this uh, all of your systems are going to have one. They're going to be in different locations. Like Windows has this way that it displays them. Uh, Mac, I think, I don't know if they call them, uh, I don't know if they're part of the keychain or it's, not. Uh, it's keychain. It's in the keychain. You can access them that way. Now, I, um, I have a question for you. Do you know if .NET Core or .NET uh, has a, a unified way to access those certificates or does it need to be coded for each individual OS? Have you ever done it? Um, I've never done it with multi-OS. Hmm. I don't know what the I don't know if the APIs would. Oh, we can try it today. Why not? Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, we can try it. Might as well. Because yeah, because I was curious about how you would load and read the certificate on a console app on Linux, yeah. so you can actually authenticate against Azure AD, and whether that would be different between Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. Sorry, uh, still in your thumb. On you go. No, no, it's fine. It'll definitely be different in terms of where you store the cert because there's no yep. concept of a cert store or anything like that in Linux. Like the, it's a file system thing, so we'll put it in the file system in a certain place. Whether or not the .NET APIs are abstracting that is, I don't know. We'll have to find out. We'll find because, out because because we have file abs uh, we have abstractions for interacting with the file system, right? It's not the same as yeah. writing uh, files in Linux as it is on Windows. So I wonder if that's something that has been abstracted. And we'll find out today. So there you go. Yeah, we'll Let's find carry out. on. Let's um, first. And Rocket Man asks, uh, would an internal CA cert be good for a secure API exposed for approved external partners? Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly, there certainly wouldn't be any problem there. The hardest part would be maintaining the issuance of that cert. So how do we make sure the cert gets issued correctly to the right people? How do we transmit it, the private key to them securely? Like all of the... Um, 
FTP. logistics of of dealing with certificates, um, it would certainly be, it's one way to do it. The alternative is just to self-sign it. Like you could also just have self-signed certificates. You don't need yep. a certificate authority for that. Um, so the thing to remember, there are kind of, there are multiple layers here. Um, at the end of the day, the, the bare minimum we need for Azure AD, Azure AD needs to get an assertion that is signed, right? Yep. So it needs to get a blob of text, essentially a JWT that is signed with a certificate. It needs to be able to verify that signature. And in order to verify that signature, all it needs to verify that signature is the, the public key. And of course the public key, the public key you can share. But and so I've uploaded- Does no need access to, so just the public key to do the assertion, does need to access your internal uh, systems to validate or right. do anything else? No, good. All Azure AD needs is the public key because it's going to use the public key to verify the signature. Perfect. So you, the the app itself, needs access to the private key because it's the thing that writes the signature. Mm -hmm. And because of that key pair, when Azure AD receives that JWT, when it receives that assertion, essentially, um, it can take the, the certificate data that you've provided it, the public key, it can use that to verify that, oh, okay, the holder of the private key is the thing that signed this JWT. And they can use that as a credential. Mm -hmm. And so how those certificate pairs get made, you uh -huh. could self-sign. So you could just create, you could, you, I mean, I think there's even a PowerShell, uh, a PowerShell command that does it now too, like new self-signed cert, bam, go, and it runs, right? Oh, um, so you don't have to use it, uh, was like OpenSSL? You can use OpenSSL if you want. You can use PowerShell if you want. Um, there are all sorts of ways to generate a self-signed cert. And in the case of web servers, self-signed certs kind of suck because unless you've got my unless you've got my certificate, you can't trust it, right? Yep. But for things like this, mm -hmm. where all you really need is a key pair and there's no sort of verification done of that chain, then self-signed certs are fine too. Sweet. So we could do a self-signed cert. All you do then is upload the thumbprint of the public key, store the private key somewhere on your machine. And then when you go to write your assertion, use that private key. That's cool, except now you've got self-signed certs that are everywhere. You don't know who generated them. You don't know where they are. Yep. You can go run a bunch of tools on your machines, I guess, to go index cert stores on various machines and figure out when they expire and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so... It's kind of a, it's it's really no different at that point than um, than just generating a, a one time you or generating a secret, yeah. right, from the portal where we create a secret because it's essentially a password. Now, um, you'd never send the secret over the wire, which is still an advantage, but a self signed cert doesn't give you any of the manageability that you get with uh, a certificate a certification authority. H3 Tech says, you don't want to be in that business. Absolutely not, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. Let's go push. Let's go write 72 group policy objects with PowerShell scripts to go and index your uh, index your cert stores cert to figure stores. out when your certificates yeah. are going to expire. And also, people <laughs> will be storing them in different places. Like, some of them will be using uh, the mm -hmm. personal ones. Some of them will be using the, the local, local machine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... It's going to be a fun. It's a doozy for ID admins to do that. Please don't do that for your ID <laughs> yeah. admins. They might, they might get white hair like the last time that we did our... Um... <laughs> so... Um, yes. so what do we do? What's, anyway, the, so, what's the first step? So in enterprises, a lot of times we see, uh, we see customers standing up their own certificate authorities. And... Um, Part of what happens is they end up getting what they'll do through policy or through some, you know, Azure AD join, Azure join, or uh, AD join, whatever. They will push uh, certificates as roots into your machine. So this machine, you'll notice, these are the public ones. AAA Certificate Services, uh, which is what is that? Setigo, Baltimore Cybertrust Root. I still have no idea where Baltimore Cybertrust came from. It's like a company from 30 years ago that's been acquired 19 times or something. But you see, these are the roots. If you open up your Windows machine today and you go look in your certificate authorities, you will see the vast majority of these. Microsoft Root Authority, GoDaddy Class 2 CA, Global Sign, DigiCert, all the big ones, right? And there's been a lot of consolidation in that market anyway. Um, 
One of these is signed. Uh, I can't remember which one it is, but one of these is the sort of root signature for um, uh, for um, Let's Encrypt. So one of these is like the DST DXT X3 uh, is signed by one of these, and that's how Let's Encrypt certificates work uh, because they're signed. They're sub signed. So anyway, but you notice we have two extra ones in here, and that's because our CA is here. So we have a CA, uh, and this is the CA that we're signed into. And yep. so if we look at the if we look at the user, this is the user. So this is me signed in. You'll notice I have these two in my trusted in my trusted root CAs. That means that anything that happens on this machine that uses Windows APIs for SSL, for TLS, for certificate work, if it's trying to verify, it's going to try to verify and this is an acceptable route. This is why this is so risky, like, or not risky per se, but this is why letting people have access to or manipulate your trusted routes is so dangerous. Malware used to do this, especially in the 90s. Because it would install days. a new, absolutely, it would install a new CA on your machine which meant that if I go to my, like, let's say I went to bankofamerica.com, right? Mm -hmm. Type in my username, type in my password. Now up in the corner, it says, in fact, I'll just, we'll just go over there and look, right? So if I go to bankofamerica.com or wherever, Chase, it doesn't matter. If we look at the little thing here, let me try to, let me try to zoom. I don't know if my zoom is going to work, but we'll try. So if you look at this little guy here, it says connection is secure. And it says, this side has a valid certificate issued to Bank of America, blah, 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 blah. Yep. And so this way we can, in fact, we can even look at the cert and it'll tell you this mm -hmm. was issued by Intrust Certification Authority. You can even look at the path and see, okay, so Intrust issued this certificate to Bank of America and then Intrust was issued, the Intrust CA was issued from Intrust.net, which is the root one, right? What malware would do and coincidentally, what a lot of admins do, especially old school and big, big, big networks, is <laughs> they will have proxies that will, they will insert their own certificate in here. Yes. They will insert their own CA in here. Mm. So when you try to go to Bank of America, it hits a proxy at the edge of your network. It yep. goes out to bankofamerica.com or whatever. It pulls back the data. There, it, it decrypts it, so it unwraps it looks at the data, does whatever it needs to do, because at that point it's clear text, right? So it's just wide open, yes. and then rewraps it with its own certificate. So it re-encrypts re the, the tunnel with its own uh, with its own certificate. And so if you were to look at what, this... Uh, what Pineapple also does, right? The, the malicious router thing that actually replaces certs on the fly. So you think that you're logging into Bank of America, but you're logging into some malicious random Bank of America website that looks and feels like Bank of America. Good luck. Um, well, it's certainly that, so. That's certainly one risk mm -hmm. is that you could end up at a different place, um, yes. and you could have a signature that looks like, oh, yeah, that looks like Bank of America's website. Um, but with with these CAs, what we would see is malware would do this because they would open up secure pipes like the secure site to bankofamerica.com, and uh, primarily to inject ads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So they would inject ads into the site, rewrap it with their own certificate, because of course they don't have Bank of America's private key. But because their malware was installed in the root, because of that, everything looked good to you. Your browser was like, oh, everything's cool here. Why not? Yeah, I mean, I've got a trusted authority here that signed this. So yeah, it's trusted. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of risk there. You, you run into risk of people uh, of danger, dangerous things happening because you can't really trust that the little padlock uh, is correct unless you look and see who signed this. Yes. How was this signed? Uh, and if it's signed from something that you don't recognize and not signed from something like this is signed by DigiCert Baltimore Root, if it's not signed by one of those, chances yeah. are it's either your company or it's malware, right? Yep. So we're going to be the company today. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, we're not malicious here. Issue some search, yeah. Yep. And remember too, certificates are used for dozens and dozens and dozens of different things. You could present a certificate to, to a website and say, hey, this is my certificate, show me yours, and we'll make sure that I'm allowed to come into this website. Mm -hmm. Sort of old school cert uh, certificate-based authentication. Um, you can use them for encrypting files. You can use them for authenticating uh, external users. You can use them for TLS and SSL. Like there are all sorts of things you can use certificates for. Yep. Um, what the key thing that we're going to do today is we need to be able to sign. That's our big thing because certificates have all sorts of different things that they're allowed to do based on the issuance. And so 
the one profile we need to make sure we're going to use today is signing. Yes. Right? And we had a we had a couple of questions community side about okay, well, like if I want to do this, what do I do? So that's mm-hmm. what sort of prompted us to go and look into standing up a CA. Yep. So um, let me get this window out of the way here. We're going to leave this up. If I can remember, oh, because I'm zoomed in. That's right. Okay. So let's go look at our certification authority. And the CAs all have templates. So these are the templates that come out of the box. We're just going to use, we can use web server or we can use computer. Web server is fine. If we open up the template, so this is under certificate uh, certification uh, certification authority certificate templates, you'll notice one of the public key usages that's allowed is digital signature. And that's what we need, right? So we need to make sure it's there. So web server is fine. So, uh, and we can even look and see the issued ones. So we see that I've issued a few certificates to myself. You can see who issued it. And there's a bunch of integration with Windows, so you can request new certificates for various reasons. We're not going to do that because I'm not on a domain join machine today. Um, and because we get a little bit of a, a little bit more visibility into the process for doing it like this. Um, there's also some web app, a web app that comes with this. It is an extremely old web app. In fact, it's a dying. ASP. Whoa. Yeah. And, Nice. I think it uses some ActiveX controls. <laughs> That's so how old do, it is. Do you, do you actually have to enable ActiveX on your machine in order to be able to use the website? Well, I'm on the server, so and it's uh, Internet Explorer. So okay. wow. we're going to do the we're going to go through the web way today, but you could always do this directly. Power Soul, um, right? Cert Manager. Yep. So there are two things. First thing we have to do is we got to we have to create what's called a certificate signing request, the CSR. And if you've ever bought a TLS certificate or ever bought a um, um, if you ever bought a TLS or an SSL certificate, you would have had to create a CSR. Yep. If you didn't create a CSR yourself, chances are the tool that you were using did. <laughs> so there's definitely a CSR that gets created. Yep. Um, oh, we got a couple questions. So Chicken Man says, if only code signing certs weren't so expensive. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Code, code signing certificates, which are different from these, are super, super, super expensive. And then Rocketman asks, what, uh, what's a client certificate for AAD look like? Um, when you say client certificate, is this? I think it's the public and the like, private pair, I guess. The public private key pair. Yeah. We're going to do that right now. Yeah. Let's go create one. So there are lots of different tools out there for creating CSRs, but we have to create a CSR one way or the other. Now we could do this advanced certificate request, which is part of the tool that comes with the CA. Um, to authenticate against AAD to get to the key vault. That's what we're going to do right now. Yep. So you're in, we're in, you're in good hands. So we'll choose web server here. That's although, what we although while, while JP is doing that, you may want to go down the route of, uh, if you need to get to, to key vault, you can also use Mazda identities, right? So you don't have to, to authenticate to Azure AD explicitly unless you want to use a service principle for that. That's, you know, that's yeah. way. Yeah, anyway, we're going so, with the certificate to AD now. So I'm going to use the web server template. We could also use the uh, the server the server authentication template, but that's not exposed through here. Mm-hmm. Uh, or we could generate a CSR a CSR on our on our own. Now, the thing I don't like about this interface is that we can't mark the key as exportable, which becomes oh, a bit really? of really that's a bit of a pain. Yeah, it's secure in the sense that if I'm on this machine, this machine. Uh, would still have access to the private key, but I can't take that private key anywhere else, right? Um, so there's a, there's there's pluses and minuses in a fully automated um, generation and, and you know deployment type of a scheme. Maybe that's okay to have non-exportable private keys on your production machines, which of course you'd want to do. Um, in our case, where we're just going to be submitting manual requests for dev keys, uh, we're just we're going to do it a little bit of a different way because we can't export the keys from here. So, um, and Rocketman says, uh, "Oh yeah, Rocketman's on prem. So for on prem, yeah. there's there's Azure Arc, which will give you a managed identity locally, which is kind of cool. We've done that quite a few times out here, um, yes. but." In this case, we're looking at straight up CSA or straight up CA. Um, so we need to generate a CSR. That's a, probably our most important thing. We're not really going to be able to generate a CSR here uh, because this web this web app, uh, besides the fact that it's nine million years old, <clears throat> just doesn't have it. Primarily, isn't going to let us export our keys. 
Um, so instead, we can submit a certificate request using a base 64 encoded CMC or PKCS number 10 file, and those files are the, uh, that's essentially a CSR. So we're going to do that. Now, how do we generate a CSR? We can generate a CSR with a bunch of online tools, although that gets a little risky because now you're going to let somebody else generate your key. Uh, things like OpenSSL, there are some things about um, <clears throat> some PowerShell commandlets we can use. I personally like the DigiCert tool because it's easy to use. And the fact that I, you don't have to use, you're not using necessarily using DigiCert to fulfill the certificate. We're just going to use it to generate a CSR for us. That's a tool you installed? So, that's a desktop yeah, app? It, you don't even install it. You just download it and run it. Okay. So let's create uh, let's create a new certificate uh, request here. So we've got create CSR up here in the corner. I, and I am dumbfounded today because you're not using the command line. I am really surprised. Yeah, I don't. I, every time I type, it moves my screen. So I'm going to apologize in advance That's fine. for this. That's fine. But I, I am impressed. You're using a UI for that. Yeah, I mean... We don't have to, but I personally like it. I don't know why my screen's jumping around every time I type, but we're going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a shorter name since it keeps on giving me trouble here. Um, oh, that's awful. So you, why is it doing yeah. Is your mouse on the side? Huh? No, your mouse is not no. on the side, is it? Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Whatever. <sighs> I'll just it away. So I'm just going to give it a name. The common name here doesn't matter because the common name... It's just how I'm going to address it. It's just the yep. name that I'm going to give it because this isn't going to be an SSL certificate per se or a TLS certificate that's going to be presented in the browser. The name actually doesn't really matter, right? Okay. Because we're, I mean, it matters in the sense that you'd want to know what it is, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It's not going to break functionality like say in a web browser because you give it a name that isn't like a DNS name or a resolvable name. Okay. Um, we'll use a 2K key size. We'll use the RSAS channel provider. That's fine. Uh, there's some other ones like uh, like the ECDSA and things are in here now too. We'll just use the RSA one because it's the most standard and it's sort of the most broadly used and we will generate the CSR. And what we'll end up with once it gets generated is we have a certificate request here. So I can copy it. You can save it to a file. You can do whatever. So let's go back to our CA. Let me zoom out a little bit here since my Zoom doesn't seem to be working. So let's go back to our CA. Now from our CA, I'll start from the beginning. So it's just on here, it's just localhost search serve. Uh, we can request the certificate. Okay. We're gonna do an advanced request. A hey, quick question while you're doing that. Is there a naming protocol so it can be tied to a solution name? I think that's, um, that's what um, Rocketman is asking. <laughs> um, yeah, you can. Uh, you can name it however you'd like. These ultimately end up being distinguished names. So DN will be the name and then have another DN of, uh, or another common name of like the, the Brutus, another common name of app for the, because that's the domain that we're working in. Nice. Um, so we're going to submit one using, we're going to submit the CSR that we just created. So we'll do this, we'll paste this in. Hey, I like and how your app, your web app has a certificate error while we're doing certificates. I actually have a proper certificate in here. I just didn't go to the right name. I'll just do, you want me, do you want me to go to the right name? Uh, is it the Brutus one? Oh, CAO, look at you. CAO1 .brutus .app. Is that what it is? See, oh, now, it's asking, well. now it's asking me for my cred. See? <laughs> but isn't it ironic that you're working on a certificate that, you know, you're supposed to validate your... There you uh, go. Is that better? There you go. No errors. There, there. you go. Beautiful. So now, I just wasn't at the right URL. I apologize for my pedantry. How about my t-shirt? Okay. All about weapons, weapons grade. Yes. Um, so we'll paste in our CSR here. We're going to use the web server template attributes. We don't need any. So let's submit that. Mm -hmm. And then it says the certificate you requested was issued. Awesome. So we can get a DER or we can get a base 64 one. So let's download. Uh, we can download the DER or we can do base 64. We'll do base 64. So let's download our cert. Do you know what the chain? You just want the certificate? Yeah, because all I need is just the cert. I don't need the because whole Because we already chain. have the, the other ones in the chain, right? They're already yeah. installed. When you're, okay. In your blast from the past, you'll see the uh, IE download window or download bar here at the yes. bottom. <laughs> so we'll save this. So I'll save this file and cert new one dot cert. So let's open up the folder. So here's the certificate. Here is the certificate that we just asked for, right? Okay. Perfect. Let's, so we're going to copy this. And I'm that's gonna a bring PM or a cert? This is a CER, sir. CER. Um, so I'm going to copy that locally, and now we can go and 
pull that into the DigiCert tool, which will, uh, which you could do this through Cert, Cert Util as well. It's essentially completing the. Uh, we're essentially going to complete the certificate request with the okay. file that we got. So let's import. Um, and I think it's in downloads. Was it maybe desktop? There it is. Well, um, I have the very oh, modern on. UI on Windows Navy use I. It's it's the paradox. Yeah. So here's our certificate import. It says, hey, here's the serial number. Here's the thumbprint, blah, 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 blah. Uh, friendly name, or we can just take it if we want. We can look at the cert if we want to see it. We look at the details. We look at the path. Like uh, the issuer couldn't be found because it's not a public issuer and we don't have the certificate. We don't have the root on my machine. Um, but we've got, you know, we've got a distinguished name in here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the issuer. We've got our subject. So this is our common name is uh, JPDA Brutus app. Yep. Our, uh, you know, OU is HQ, our org is Brutus.app, location is Charlotte, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got all the data that we need in here. So that's cool. Okay. And when we hit finish, we will have our new certificate. So here's the cert that we just created, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can see this in cert manager. So if we go over to cert manager, we'll see it, or we can just export it. And if we want to export it, we want to export the private key. That way I can use it, right? Yes. Now, on my local machine, we could also not use it which would be fine too, because we wouldn't want to export it because I'm already on the machine that's going to do the work. But when we go to work somewhere else, we're going to need that private key install yep. the machine or, or whatever. Um, so we want to export the private key. We don't need to include all the certs in the path. Um, and we're going to have to give it a password. So I'll just give it a password. Hunter 2. Password. Hunter two. No. Exclamation mark. No Hunter 2. And then we'll save that, right? So I'll just save this to... I guess I'll just save it to my desktop. Bruce Lane is in the house. Hey, Bruce. How are you doing, sir? Uh, this magnifier is not working very well. So we'll save this. Now we've got a PFX. A PFX has multiple certificates in it, and it's going to be protected. So we've got a password we have to use to get the private key in there. So let's finish. Key's been exported. Cool. We get zoomed out so that my screen stops jumping around. And so now we have a certificate and we have both the public key and the private key, right? Boom, done. So the next thing we need uh, is uh, we need to go over to Azure AD. So Azure AD, we've got our app registration. Of course, I imagine everybody's familiar with, uh, I imagine we are, uh, hi, Bruce Lane. Good to see you this morning, this afternoon, whatever. Um, We need an app. Words. I lost your yeah, words. I forgot, forgot. I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> this is just regular Azure AD. Nothing, nothing exciting here, right? Um, and so here we've got our certificates and our secrets. 6 p.m. for Bruce Lane. So good evening then, Bruce Thanks Lane. Thanks for joining us. I will be slow uh, in the day. Hope you're going to have something good for dinner. Um, so now we need to upload our cert. Now, of course, you do this with the API, too. In fact, that's one of the things we were working on before was our key rotator, which mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get back to probably next week. Um, and this is where we'll upload those keys. So you'll notice it says upload the certificate's public key. So we don't need the private key, right? Now, we exported we exported the public and the private keys into our mm -hmm. PFX. Yeah. But we only need to give Azure AD the public key. Public. If we give Azure AD the private key, too, we've kind of screwed up. <laughs> We've, we've, we've completely missed the whole point of doing it, right? Yep. So uh, what we'll do is we can export again from that same tool or um, and just not include the private key, or we come over here to our, um, to our machine. So this is Cert Manager. Uh, this is an MMC snap-in. It's available for anybody who's got MMC. Um, and this is a certificate. This is a certificate snap in. Now, you, if you run Cert Manager directly, it will open for your local user. So you'll want to run MMC. You'll want to add remove snap in, choose certificates. And when you add it, you'll have an option of my user account, service account, or computer account. You, we want to choose computer account because that's what we're interested in. Yep. We're going to use our computer account. And you'll notice, uh, let me refresh these. We have a new certificate that was just added here. Mm hmm. This is in the personal store of the local computer. Yep. And we have this new one that was just issued. In fact, we even see the web server template over here on the side. And this is the same, this is the same one that we just used. So if we were to take this and export it, we can export the certificate and not export the private key, and that would give us our public key. 
So we're going to say, no, we don't want to export the private key. Mm -hmm. And we're going to choose, we can choose whichever one. We can choose, use, use a DER, we can use Base64, we'll use Base64 since we're going to be uploading it over the internet and let's give it a place we want to go. And we'll call this uh, Brutus app public key.cer. We'll put it on, I'll just put it on my desktop. I know you can't see that, so. Okay, so we're gonna put this on my desktop. Next, finish, export was successful. And what? Uh, Phil Snubble yeah. says, this is a boomer stream with uh, IE and MMC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should have done this. I guess we could have done all this through PowerShell too, but. We could, PowerShell that. core. In um, there you go. So here's our public key. So we're gonna upload our public key CER file, right? 2K, streaming upload, it's up, so let's add it. And now we have a new file and it's got a, it's got the thumbprint on it, right? So now our thumbprint, this is this just identifies the certificate to Azure AD. Yep. Azure AD, now we should be able to use that private key that we just used to sign assertions that Azure AD can verify, because now it has that certificate. Oh man, the punches keep on coming. Webmonger says, and you guys were suggesting WinForms were out of date. <laughs> <laughs> we had IE, we had a classic ASP app, yeah. classic ASP web app with ActiveX, no less. Yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, bring back the 2000s, right? It's, it's crazy. And we're, and we're using MMC, so. I mean, you have to fill it for IT admins, right? They have to still work with uh, legacy screens and legacy UIs, man. We're doing it through UI for the purposes of explaining it. We'll do yes. it. We'll, we'll PowerShell. We'll PowerShell or script or whatever the whole thing next. Yeah, the whole the whole thing is that if you were doing it through PowerShell, it would be like five commands, and you would run the whole script in one go, and it's hard to explain what's happening there. Whereas at least yeah. now you can follow step by step. So okay, um, yeah. The chat is always here to keep us on our toes. That's Thank you, Roberto Bulls. So no, we're not going to bring back IE six. Come on. In fact, you heard the news, right? I, I is dead. It's not going to be supported ever again. It's gone sure. forever from Windows. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so we got our cert. We got our cert file. Let's get write some code. Yes. Are you going to do it on Linux? Are we doing it in WSL? I'm going to do it on Windows for the moment. Yes. Um, so let's. <clears throat> uh, remind me again what your what is your uh, autocomplete thing? I was trying to say it up the other day and I forgot. Easy predictor. Easy predictor, okay. So that's an extension to a, uh, PowerShell? That is an extension to PS right, uh, PS Reline. Oh, okay. So you okay. Both PS Reline and Easy Predictor. Easy Predictor. Or yep. Okay. See? So go. let's get over into our .NET folder. Hey there, Dark Skill TV. We are, uh, we are doing client certificates for Azure AD for credentials today. Yes. From a CA. Yes. CA issued certificates instead of secrets. Or Roberto Bulls is being um, a little bit. Thank you, Roberto Bulls. So <laughs> let's do a .NET. We're just going to create a new .NET new console. Nothing, nothing crazy here. Just a new .NET console app, right? So let's do. Uh, let's get this open in VS Code. If I can find my VS Code, and make sure it's. Uh, let's see, everything looking good over here. That's right. We did do Visual Fox Pro. Uh, that was. <laughs> It's pretty interesting. Hey, stick around because next time we'll pull out my Encarta CDs. No, no, no. We have Call Fusion. Don't forget Call Fusion. <laughs> I did at one point have to build Cold, Cold Fusion, write Cold Fusion for customers. That, that, that's why I'm mentioning it. There's an OAuth 2 library for Cold Fusion. Is that open source? Do you open source this? <laughs> There's zero quality. Um, <laughs> I gave them a sample and said, oh. please go and turn this into production. And but it is all on GitHub, yeah. which I'm it's happy It's on GitHub. Do. Okay, there you go. You can find it on yeah. GitHub. If you are still doubling with Cold Fusion, it is there. So we got a console app. Okay. <laughs> we got our console app. Let's go add our, we need what? We need one library. We need one so library. Add package Microsoft.identity.client. Oops, mm -hmm. .client. Let's add our identity client, right? Which is Imcel. Because right. why have the uh, why have um, why have the li the package name match the name of the the colloquial name of the library? That would make yeah, way too. Much that would make so. What would it be like msol.net? 
That would be a nifty package. That would be so that would be to work That would be a great name for the package. So Dark Skill TV, we are actually building a console app, like a daemon app using .NET Core or .NET 5. Are you in .NET 5, by the way, dear friend? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So .NET 5. And what we're going to do is load that certificate, a private certificate, so we can authenticate against Azure Active Directory uh, and, and uh, you know, validate the authentication using certificates only. So no secrets. That's the whole point. But we manage the whole certificate issuance and the certificate usage. So no around. string secrets. No string secret, secrets, we'll say. No string secrets. Okay, yes. Because we're not going to have, we don't have like a, a no, not a symmetric secret. So instead of sending a password over the wire, we're going to send an assertion over the wire. Yep. And the assertion is a one time, one time shot. Toss it away, mm -hmm. just like a token. Toss away after you're done. Yep. Um, how do you do an async main, Christos? Uh, so it's a static task, static async task main. Is that it? Yep. Oh, okay. Now you need to put async before, right? Yeah, sorry. Yes, that's it. Make sure you import the namespaces. Right, so System.threading. See, I, I told you that JP is annoying because he remembers the namespace rather than doing um, control dot and figuring out what the namespace is. I always forget control dot. <clears throat> okay, so let's do hello. Hello. I didn't like what I had before. Yep. So first we need to create us a client. So we've got to create us an MSAL client. So we'll just call this MSAL. This is a... Uh, oh, do you need, need to put uh, voids? Async task. Does it need to be void? Do you need to return on main? Why is main underline? Uh, probably because there's nothing async in there yet. There's no awaits. Oh, yeah, there okay. are no awaits cool. yet. So let's import identity.client. This will give us our MSAL. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, .NET, .NET uh, 6 and C Sharp 10 add a lot of top level stuff that you don't have to uh, even add all these namespaces. It's going to be freaking awesome uh, for certain scenarios. We have an out of topic question. What phone hey, are you up? using? What phone are you using? Is it uh, Cascadia? No, this is uh, JetBrains Mono, I believe. Wow. And the and the glow came from Synthwave 84, which is the theme. Is it theme, right? I'm going to put it there and then I'm going to... Which is such a, it's such a great theme uh -huh. that you have, sure. that yes. you have to... Uh, such a great theme that in order for the glow to work, you have to modify VS Code system files. And then it says, hey, your installation is <laughs> corrupt. But luckily, someone's written another extension to make those corrupt installation errors go away. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Yeah, so you come in and you do uh, enable neon dreams. That's the thing that makes it glow. And when you do that, <clears throat> the next time you start it, it'll say, oh, this isn't working or something's wrong or whatever. So then you come in here and you there's another one called fix checksums and it fixes all the file checksums. <laughs> so you have a, an extension that fixes an extension that uh, makes uh, your things glow. There you go. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And what's the price? It's the price of uh, the price of vanity. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to create our client. So confidential yes. client builder create here. We need our client ID, which we'll go get here in a minute. Um, and then we need a, let's see. So we got our dot create. We'll yeah. do a dot with authority, which will be our uh, login.microsoftonline.com. And we'll use my directory name since that's the one that we're using. Yep. And then we're going to do a, let's see, where do we go from there? Do we do a with? With certificate. Do we need a with certificate? Yeah, I guess we do need, uh, yeah, I guess we do need a with because certificate. Because otherwise it will assume it's a client secret. And that means that we need a cert. Yep. So we, we got to get it. Read and read the cert. Hey. I think your corporate fitter has uh, has gone to join his friends. <laughs> oh, he probably did. It's gotten really quiet. I guess he was like, he was like, I'm not doing this alone. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> or he's finished. I mean, imagine his uh, JP surprise walking outside and then seeing everything fixed by this yeah, one person. He's like, he's like, they told you four days, more like four hours. Four hours. I'll, I'll, I'll show these guys. Before. I'll show these guys. I don't need them. I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, there are certainly times where it's easier to get work done alone than it is with 18 other people. You know what I mean? Oh, um, could you be more subtle on your hints? Fine, I'm leaving. You're not 18 <laughs> other people. It's fine I'm one with of you. Them, isn't it? Well, but I, if it was just, if it was targeted towards you, you know I would have told you. you know, sometimes it's so much easier to work when Christos is not around. True. That's, true. Not, the, uh, that's not true. 
as our uh, assessment said, I bring chaos. <laughs> That's chaos true. Bring your air. That is one thing we had to take these uh, like work assessment things, and uh, one of Christos's things said that can bring chaos. Yes. Period. Yes. With no sure. modifiers, no like when under stress or anything like that, just can no. bring chaos. Period. Bring chaos. Yeah, I think I need a new name. The Chaos Bringer. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the, fir the first of his name, the Chaos Bringer. How about that? Confidential client client application builder. That's what I was missing. It okay. wasn't even a hint, uh, Grant uh, TNT. Grant TNT. It was straight up. It's easier to work alone. That's what he said, right? It's I need to I need a clip for that, please, to send to my manager because. <laughs> Maybe for our uh, for our annual review stuff, the three sixty reviews, right? Um, yeah, and I uh, just see, uh, yeah, O O J O J Piter. O J I don't know. What I, I don't know what I just said, but uh, yeah, I'll share my uh, I'll share my oh my posh theme because I actually put it. I thought I put it online somewhere, but if I didn't, I will, and I'll I'll post it up for the internet. Put it on GitHub, um, or I'll, I'll post it on our on our blog or whatever. Um, so we need our search. So the first thing is we got to get. We need a certificate store because the store is where it is, and of course we need some more namespaces. So this is uh, system dot photography x five hundred nine certificates. There we go. Hey, th thanks for all the follows, friends. We really appreciate that. You are the community that makes the show. So thank yeah. you. So um, so we need our store because we're going to go get our certificate straight out of the store. Now, we could also just open us. We could also just open the file. Like since we had that file, we could also just open the file locally. Um, but for the moment, we'll use our store. And so our store uh, needs a store location. You see my, so my face me... spasming as you said you could store it locally right now. Don't. You could store it in the tree if you were feeling like for dev for local dev, store it in your tree. Just don't check it in publicly. Yeah. Okay. Or stored in a stored in a secured folder on your machine somewhere or something. I mean, you know, um, you don't have to. But or store, it, it, stored in the keychain or whatever certificate store you should be using. Like, do it right. Yeah. Don't take shortcuts. So, um, our store. We need to open the store, which is mm. kind of a strange. And our uh, we need to open it read only because we're not going to be doing any writing. So let's do. Uh, we're going to open read only. Mm -hmm. So we're going to open it and then we need to find so now we have to find our certificate so yes. uh let's see certificates and then find and there are lots of different ways to find it so you can do a find and then you have a type of find which is yes. x nine find type is that a oh look at that find by word, name it's yeah, a wordsmith <laughs> um enums for the win by the way enums for the win so we can find it by the thumbprint, we can find it by the subject name, we can find it by all sorts of different things. And some of these might be more useful for you than for others, okay. um, for de depending on the app. So if, you, if you've got like a single node running somewhere and you've got this out in the store, well, you may have uh, only one thing that's been issued by your CA. So you may say, only find me the CA certs that have been issued by my CA. Um, you may say, only find me ones that have been issued by a specific template or whatever. We're just gonna use the thumbprint. That way we know we're getting exactly the correct one. Um, although we can try, let's try by subject name first and yeah. then we'll go to thumbprint if we have to. So we named that Brutus app, I believe. Let me go check uh, my- Fuel Snubble stores key certificates in OneNote. Oh, good. Good, <laughs> good place for them. <laughs> or he says when he wants to be super secure, he's, uh, he saves it as an F-sharp file, and therefore it's too obscure to read. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, that's, that's, a great, that's a great idea. You win today. If you'll I'm, just, I'm just yeah. kidding. You should definitely not keep them in there. But um, And don't, don't make so, fun of F-sharp, please. We have some really vocal friends. Yeah, I kind of feel like F Sharp's a little bit like a vegan at a dinner party. Oh no, I've said too much. All right, I'm, <laughs> we'll, we'll move on. Or the CrossFitter, right? They will let you. Um, <laughs> that's that's true. Could you imagine <laughs> what if you were to build like a like a scheduling app in F Sharp for scheduling CrossFit and dinner? Yes, it can only be F Sharp. Okay, sorry. We're going to be kicked off the air. It's been a lot of fun doing this with everybody. I'm glad We're we fired. Thank you. It was great serving the community. Uh, we had a lot of fun. 
Okay, so we're going to find by subject name. We're going to see if the subject name works. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm not 100% confident I have the right name in there, but we'll see. So we're going to try to find by subject name. We can also find by thumbprint. You get the thumbprint off the cert. You can go property. back to the CA, man, and tick it. Yeah, one extra thing on here is you'll notice that there's a valid only flag, okay? And so um, we're going to set this to false for two reasons. One, we don't have the root CA on our machine. And so our certificate is technically not valid. And also it could be expired. And we're going to talk about expiring certificates here in a few minutes too for Azure AD, but we'll, we're, I'm going to save that one until we get there. Uh, so let's go find our cert. And then the return from this is going to be an X509 certificate to collection. So let's see, we'll call this results. And then our certificate, we should only have one, is results index zero. <laughs> do okay so in theory this should give us our certificate so let's uh let's run it and see now once we've configured this we'll do an msal we'll do an a, a acquire token uh msal we'll do uh oh i need to do a dot build on here right yeah, yeah. Dot build. okay so we'll do an acquire token for client uh, and we'll do it for a certain scope. We will do graph, the graph default scope, graph to Microsoft.com forward slash dot default. We'll talk about the default default scope here in a minute. And then we'll do an execute async on that. Okay. This should yeah. get us an access token. This should get us an access token from Azure AD and provided that everything was configured correctly, uh, we should get one. So for the moment, let's just console right line this thing and see if we get a token at all. So we'll do token.access token, and we'll see if we get it. And and then I know somebody's going to laugh at me for this, but uh, I'm going to just do a read line so that I don't lose my window. Thanks. Yeah, OK. Um, so uh, should we run it, or should we step into it? Christos? I would say run it. Oh, okay. We're just going to run it. Oh, wait all a minute. Right. Does your uh, operate? Well, first of all, you don't have the client ID, so it's going to bomb. Oh, and the second one, you don't have, I don't know if you've configured an access token for your app. So let's get our client ID. Good call. We do need our client ID. It's okay. We got our client ID. Not just a pretty face with nice t-shirts. I'm just bring some knowledge here. Wait, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, it was held. Dark skill said he was joking about what? What happened? Well, there was uh, something about fatty comments there, and we had to. Oh, I didn't see it. Hold it. Yeah, I. Oh, I didn't see it. it. I missed it. What happened? Oh, okay. When? Now, want, yeah. When in I'm doubt, afraid. go with the safe. Now I, want to, now I want to know what it is. I'm I'm confused now. Line twenty six. You have an extra semicolon. Yes, that's right. Thank you. There's that's true. Score. People are paying attention. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh. And, uh, Perfect, guys. Lunch. He's back from lunch. <laughs> so, uh, Phil Snubble, by the way, he is uh, F an F uh, Sharp developer. So, I'm I'm thinking we should actually get him on the show to build something with Fable. We have done uh, zero stuff good. with F Sharp, and I think that our documentation is lacking in terms of uh, using F Sharp. So, we would love to have you if you if you're up for it. Anytime, reach out to us. You know where to find us. Forty five show at Microsoft.com. We can set it up and build something fun together. Yeah, let's do it. That would be a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. All jokes aside, F Sharp is super cool. I tried it once and my brain twisted itself in ways it wasn't intended to go. Um, okay, so you just want to run it? You don't want to step into it first? No, man, run it. Great, let's run it. So we're doing. So I always run it first, and then if it fails, then I go back and do um, a step into. Right? All right. Oh, look at that! It worked. We I told you. Boom. So we've got an okay. access token. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's go, let's go look at our access token and see what's in it. It works out of the box. What does it give us? Uh, so we've got a graph token. So it's an mm -hmm. audience of graph, which is awesome. Um, our app, our, our app ID is B9C, blah, blah, blah. So this yep. is the app ID that this is our client app, our console app. And look at this app ID ACR. This is the authentication context reference, which nice. zero, uh, I don't know what zero means. One means you used a client secret, and two means you used a client certificate. Is there is there a zero? Is there a uh, zero-based value? 
There is, but I don't know. Let's see, Azure AD App ID ACR. I don't know what the zero means in zero our. Zero there's uh, none? How can you have none? You still need to authenticate against it. Let's look for App ID ACR. Um, only present of only present of V1 tokens. Oh, for a public client. Oh yes. The value is zero because a public client, of course, can't authenticate itself. So. Yep. So client ID and client secret, then the value is one. Oh, nobody can see that because our faces are in front of it. PKC. Um, so client ID and client secret, value is one. Client certificate is two. Public clients. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. No, public clients. There you go. Now, now do so, all that in Linux. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. <clears throat> let's see here. So I guess there are two ways that we can run this. Mm -hmm. On the one hand... I could just open this with WSL and tell it to run. Yes, but WSL will still have bindings to the Windows uh, subsystem, right? And therefore, it will still have access to that. I wonder if, does WSL come with its own um, certificate store, which should be uh, ETC, should. ETC, SSL, blah, if I remember correctly? Yeah, so let's see. We love Linux, uh, Dark Skill. We love Linux. We try to be as inclusive as possible. Oh, by now, the way, did I tell you? I've set up my Mac Mini finally while JP is looking at that. So over the weekend, I spent time setting up my Mac Mini M1 with two monitors. Check this out. Mac Mini does not support two monitors uh, using uh, USB-C. So you can only connect one on USB-C and the other one through HDMI. What is that? Hmm. That's insane. Anyway. So I've managed to get the two screens up and working. So maybe next time when we want to do some Mac stuff, I can jump onto my other workstation and connect through there. That would be fun. Yeah, it was exciting. Oh, I don't have .NET, I don't have .NET 5 in my WSL. Oh, it's easy to set it up. Just uh, curl install. Yeah, the one I begged uh, to for work. Yeah, that's right. We have a, yeah, there it is. So um... for a while. Oh. And Bolt, I was sitting there for that long because <laughs> Chad roasted me, uh, because I was waiting for a dock, a USB-C dock, because it only has two USB-Cs uh, in the Mac Mini, and therefore I had to use a dock for everything else. <laughs> you know, it's the it's the the common issue with Apple that they only provide very minimal uh, ports, and therefore you have to have uh, no. No, the, uh, the, the dock could not support the two USB-C monitors. You still have to go through USB-C and HDMI. That's a limitation on the Mac Mini. Sorry. Okay, so this is building. Yeah. Oh, but it's still, it's still open over here. Let me, close my, uh, let me close my VS Code over here. So let's see. Let's build. I might okay. just copy this to the WSL file system. Might be easier. No, okay, there we go. So we got to build. Okay. So okay. it's building, but uh, you won't be able to run it because the certificate is missing, right? Well, yeah, because there'd be no, because, well, I don't know where the store is in Linux. We'll have to go see where my uh, where local computer, uh, let's see. Ah, local, Unix local machine X509 store is limited to the root and certificate authority stores. Oh. Interesting. Uh -huh. So let's go look at X509 store that class and see for Linux, right? And see how it works. Let's see what our options are. Well, we ideally we'd have one that works on both, right? Is that terminal from Linux? Uh, the WSL is running inside Windows terminal and uh, JP has configured his Windows terminal to be customized. So uh, if you're not using Windows terminal, go and install it today. It even comes with Quake mode. Do you have Quake mode installed? Uh, Windows yep. tick, try it. Yeah, this is Ubuntu 2004. Yeah, LTS. So. Oh, people are asking. Um, okay, cool. Well, just in case somebody thought it wasn't Linux. Okay. Um. So let's see. There is a store store location. This is what we want to look at. So store location has current user and local machine. However. Hmm. So what was that error? Unix local machine X509 store is limited to the root and the certificate authority stores. Hmm. 
I wonder if that means I need to give it a name. I guess root. Or actually, certificate authority. Well. Okay. Hmm. Could fall back to reading the PFX file directly. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, if, we you, could, if you. We could definitely fall back to that, but not really. But hopefully, we don't have to do that. Uh, ideally, you want to install it on the on the certificate authority. Well, right? actually. Okay. We could so so okay so say I'm running a web server right, um, my web server user could always just store it in a store it there right, so mm -hmm. let me create a I'm just gonna create a folder called certs. Oh, you're gonna store it there and then just read it from that uh, directory. Yeah, I don't really like that though because now I have to have a password to read the pfx. Yep, and then so yeah. It's not ideal. Let's look at this. I'm going to look at this X509 stores. It's limited to the root and certificate authority stores. So let me open this up and code again. And we'll open it through Linux or through Ubuntu this time. And then uh, let's see. I'm just going to take this and let's go see what the internet has to say. I mean, I need to give it a name. Do I need to name the one? That's what I'm curious about. So let's see here. Ooh, this is app service. So here's a stack, which is great. Cause this what we need is a 9 billion line. Uh, let's see. Store location should probably be current user instead of local machine, but I think that's app service specific. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is to get, this is app service specific. This yeah. is for getting to the search store and app service, which we don't necessarily want. The top sites.net seems pretty sketchy. Like it probably just got this from somewhere else, but we'll click it just to see. Um, okay, so let's see. This is like my stock user. exchange almost. Uh, oh, there's a, a Rocketman put a link there. How to import oh. a CA root certificate. Well, I don't need the CA root. I okay. just need a place to put my search yes, exactly i just need to place put my specific certificate just the one um just the one that we're going to use for our authentication because the ca is right the ca we we could add the ca if we wanted to mm -hmm. but for our cert itself we just need somewhere to put it exactly. um yep oh my so this is a, let's see dot net core fx cryptography so um so let's see. The SSL connection no longer accepts PFX, so I had to add the PIM. Yeah, this is uh, this is like scraped from Stack Overflow, I guess. Yeah. So this is somebody using uh, this is somebody using IS four. I need the search store in there, but it should be the same thing. Should be the same. So what's the best place? So what's the best place for loading the signing credential? That's a good. This is a good question. Um. Oh, yeah, just, just copy the PFX into your container. <laughs> well, if you're running a container, then that makes sense. But if you're running on uh, bare metal, then you, you don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't like... Well, I don't, I don't necessarily also, have to ship this you, everywhere. If you load the PFX as a, as a file, then, you, as you said, you need to use the secret to load it, right? Yeah, if you load it from a file, you, gotta have, you, gotta, you need to have the password. Um, we might as well just use the client secret then because the whole point of is removing or um, doing away with the secret. So this has been open for six years. God, wow. My, conf oh. my confidence is dropping a little. <laughs> uh, let's see. Permission problem. Okay. Is it... Well, it looks like, like, looks like this issue was specifically to design what local machine my means, right? Okay. Um, Surely we're not the only ones that are coming across this issue where we need to read the certificate in our .NET Core app. Authenticate to Azure with certificate from Linux. That looks promising. Um, oh, so, okay, so this imports. So they create a couple certs, okay. But this isn't on Linux. Well, actually... That's PowerShell running on Linux. So this is PS. It looks like it's PS Core, but where does 
So what's the store name and store location? So this is using store name of my, and this is using store name or store location of current user. Okay. Which, I mean, we can use we current. Well, no, we want local machine. Oh, one local machine. Okay. Would that not be the same? Oh, this, uh, this is, this, the, well, it turns out the fallback is to search in a custom location that's handled by .NET Core framework. Chicken okay. Machine. All right. So we can either create a file or we can, I wonder if the current, well, I guess we're going to have to, yeah, I wanted local machine because ideally, you know, if I got a machine that's coming online, I'd just use that. But uh, we can use, I mean, we can use, hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, I wanted to use local machine. We don't have to use local machine, however, but. Um, what will happen if you replace my, uh, the user with local machine? It seems that there's well, only we... a local machine store. Uh, Chickenman says, it seems that there's only a local machine store in Linux. Hmm. So the local machine X5 and I store is limited to the root and CA stores. What does that mean exactly? There is or there isn't, Chicken Man. There's only a local machine store on Linux. So this is a user store. Can you search for that error message? I did. Oh, you did. That's that's the search. That's the set of search results we're in. <laughs> okay. Um. I love how somebody's asking for Linux and somebody dumps the Windows registry settings there. Mm -hmm. Linux equivalent for Linux equivalent for Windows Search Store. Yep. Oh, for SSH way. keys. So there you go. Search. This is SCS SSL search, but is that gonna is that going to be open? I wonder if that'll. I wonder if local machines gonna open that. Is .NET local machine going to open that? I'll leave this one up because that, that's got some promise. I agree. That seems promising. You should use root or the certificate authority as the name of the store. Ah, okay. Ah. So, because we're using store location local machine, it's saying we should also make sure we give it a name. There's only uh, but, someone says there's only one default store, and that is more like a local machine store. And if you want to use a user store, you have to use a folder, which makes sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I don't want to use. And I don't want a user store, so that's fine. So, I guess the question is, where does this equate though on yeah. Windows? So do you need to have right? a, do you need to have a switch? Uh, to say if you're running on Windows, then do X. But if you're running on Linux, then you need to do almost like a flag, right? Read the local operating system that you're running on and then act accordingly. It might not be a unified way to access the store. Lame. Well, yes and no. I mean, you know that certain platforms have their own idiosyncrasies on how they do things. And I, I'm pretty sure that if we were to do it on, on Mac OS, there might even be a third flag that we need to read into, or the same flag, reading into the third OS. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like that. But let's see. So, all right, so let's go look. I have my eyes all twitchy. Um, so, we have a so we don't have that there. So we have a, it was a store name. And then we have, so there's root and CA. Those are the two that are allowed. On Windows, it's in my. Mm -hmm. In store name, it's in, uh, so there's a CA. It's uh, a store uh, name dot my dot store location dot local machine. Which is fine for Windows because we were that's essentially what we were doing. We just weren't explicit about the name. So we'll do store location, local machine. I uh, can't access my, says, all right, okay. So that's what, but, yeah, so we can't access my own Linux, right? Is that it? Yeah. So we can get to, we can get to my on Windows. Windows, okay. But for Linux, we have to use root or certificate authorities for Linux. The store name. So are you, you going to catch the exception and try to do the other one? How are you going to do it now? 
Well, so I wonder what a store. I wonder if store name root equates to anything in Windows. Yeah, let's try it. I, is, that, is that throwing an error message? I don't know. I haven't run it yet. We can run it in Windows though. I see an underline under your um, line sixteen. I wonder if that's just the ID. No, I think it's just the ID. What's up? Phil, Phil Snubble says you don't need certs on Linux. It's a free open source and therefore no security problems by design. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I try like to run this. I'm gonna like try to run this yeah. from Windows side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's no cert in there that matches, right? Because it's yep. a different, it's a different store, different folder name. So kind of. I, I am telling you, you have to explicitly add the logic there. To say if uh, if OS is Windows, uh, load the store from here. If it is, if it is Linux, then load the store from here. The platform. Wow. Lame. God, it's so lame. Fine. Hey, you'll survive. I don't like this at all. It's lame. <laughs> so we'll do so we'll do store name my. Store Actually don't we'll do store will be inaccessible out there, so you need to initialize it outside the uh, the if statement. But I'm not opening it until twenty six, so I wonder if I can initialize it but not open it. I'll initialize it. If it's not Windows, then we'll do the other one. Okay. Oh, you're overriding store with uh, in line 19. I see. That's a good idea. Yeah, so we'll just override it. Override. Override. I'm sure, that, I'm sure the F-sharp folks and their immutable VARs will not like that, but um, that's okay. So the store for here will be a new X509 store i guess we could also just we could also be even cleaner about it but whatever okay. so the store name in this case needs to be either root or cas mm -hmm. and store location is is it still local machine i don't think it's local machine it is uh current user in that case because there's like fuel or like uh like chicken man said there isn't really is it like this concept of a personal store versus a non-personal store right okay um you know, one thing we could do, mm -hmm. let me, let's debug this and see if we get any results first, because we'll probably have to tweak it a little bit. What time is it, by the way? 1248? Uh, we got 12 minutes. Plenty of time to fix everything. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Couldn't find a debug adapter descriptor for debug type core CLR. Okay. Oh, you know why? I should probably let me do this because we're on the same folder, but we're in Linux or in Windows. Oh. And I just .NET built it with Linux or .NET yeah. built it with Windows. So let's .NET build with Linux over Linux. here. Yeah. Probably should have just copied this folder, but whatever. Okay, I'm trying to run this one more time. Nope. Can't find a debug adapter descriptor for Core CLR. I wonder why. Why wouldn't we be able to find? Is the uh, is the debugger um, de designed? You know when when you create a launch, then it actually uses the. I wonder if you. Arguments workspace folder being debug. Is there one for WSL? Well, I mean, I guess it would be a remote one, would it not be? Maybe. Hmm. Was it net 5.0? Is that the thing? Uh, yep, net 5, I think. And then let's see, what is it going to be? Dot net client cert dot debug or dot DLL? Mm -hmm. Dot net client cert dot DLL. All right. Okay. Try this one more time. Is it wrong? I picked the wrong launch. Let's do. I don't know which one it is now because I named them the same. You can rename them. 
there probably is a specific WSL, I would imagine, right? A specific WSL target for that. I, think. I haven't tried it. Do you shave? Yeah, okay. All right. Let's try. Why did the names change? That's not that's not helpful. I gave it a new name, but it didn't change the names. I don't know which ones which ones which. Oh wait, that's yeah. Okay, there it is. WSL. Okay, maybe this just has to like reload or something. I don't know. I guess I'll pick the first one see if it works. Oh. It does not. Let's try the second one. Oh, there it is. Now, now it's got the right name. Still don't work. Whatever. I don't have time to debug VS Code debuggers. Um, so I guess we'll see if we get a store dot open, and then mm -hmm. maybe if we get a store open, um, we could just get all the certs and just iterate them. Yeah. See what's in them, right? Yes. Well, we'll have the, the certificate anyway, there, right? Hmm? We haven't, we haven't well, installed that true. certificate. That's true because we don't know where this. We don't know where the store is yet. I think that's what we're trying to figure out, right? Yes. Um. So let's see. Good old console right line debugging. So let's see. I don't have time to debug. I'll use that next time I monitor when there's a major bug. Found. Yeah. I don't have time to debug. I don't have time to debug the debugging profile. That's just what I meant to say anyway. Nobody ain't got um, time for that. It's a nice meme for it. Get the issuer name, and then we will get. The uh, name, get name. Uh, oh, here we go. Subject name. We'll just get subject name and issuer name. Hopefully, we don't have to even run this. A issuer name. Mm -hmm. okay. So this way, we should at least know where we are, which would be helpful. So let's go back over here and .NET run this thing. Are you running from WSL? Mm hmm. Okay. Mm, looks like nothing. Okay. Now it may also be because now I may not also I may not have permission to access that store on Linux either. Would it not blow? Hmm. Would it not blow with an exception? Uh, that I, I, I don't know. Interesting. So we should be hitting this store. We're trying to open the store read only. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to try to print the certs that are in there. And the store is open, so that should be good. All right, we'll run this, run this again, then we'll have to go. Well, do you need to run as a sudo? Ah, good point. Well done, Fuel Snubble. Thank you, Fuel. <laughs> just type sudo in front of all the commands, like proper um, Linux pros. <laughs> <laughs> like a boss. <laughs> So it looks like there's still nothing in there. So okay. I, it could just be that. Uh, now look, we could try the other one, right? The other, the other. Uh, so that was the certificate authority store. Mm -hmm. Now I also don't know if this needs to be local machine or not, because of course the docs are not clear. So I don't know which one it needs to be. So we'll try certificate authority local machine. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So it should come after right after hello. So we'll try store name root. And I have to, to do both. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. There we go. There are definitely certificates in here. Nice. So wherever wherever we are, we found some certificates, and I didn't actually get the name out of them. Let's just get the name. Subject name. .NET 6 will fix that, by the way. Do you know that? Uh, will, uh, that uh, two string will be uh, implicit, and you get proper names for objects. Okay, so here are a bunch of CA certs. That's good, right? Very nice. Oh, DST root. There's the uh, that's the, the Let's Encrypt authority. Um, okay, so we got a bunch of CA certs. So that's good. Where are these? Let's, are these the ones that are in uh, Etsy CA? Let's see. 
AKS key store. Or, yeah, I guess we should have just opened it with a file, huh? Now, if I run this and I'm not root, do we still get that list of certificates? We do. So we st so so root doesn't matter there. Cool. So this is the CA list. I don't know. We're going to have to figure out. We're going to have to figure out. I guess we. I guess the worst case is we fall back to uh, the like the uh, chicken man suggestion of .NET Core FX cryptography X509 stores my and just have it in the file system. Which is pretty. Yeah. Light. Remember, so, file system requires you uh, to use a, a, sec a secret to read it, and therefore, I'm not happy for that. I rather have this. Uh, you know, logic of three extra lines to check if the operating system is Linux and then load it like that. Yeah, but where do we, where do we put our, where do we put our private keys? Oh, yes. I don't know. We're going to, we're going to have to read up about it because it's 1256. We got to go anyway. Well, uh, who are we going to, who are we going to read today? Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll know by Friday. Rockstar. Code Rush. Rockstar. Joel, Rush. Joel 561. What is, what is he working on? Uh, she's doing project management. I don't think. With Vue.js. Symphony 5 and Vue.js. It's interesting. Where are we going? You tell me where to go. You, uh, all of you people vote and tell us where you want to go. Uh, just Belnor just joined us. I would say let's go to Rockstar. I like he's doing an interview though. So, mm, man. We don't have any. Code Rust. How about what is he doing? Code Rust. He's doing uh, hiking stuff, targeting right. UIs. All right, let's go to Code Rush. Code Rush. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Tomorrow, our IT Pro friends are back on uh, same time, 8 a.m. Pacific tomorrow. We yep. will be back Friday where we will have a definitive answer. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to be definitive about we my We will have an answer. We'll have an answer about where we should store these certificates in Linux. Um, and we'll start plugging along more on our, uh, on our rotator. Yes. So thanks for hanging out with us. Let's go raid Mr. Code Rush and see what he's working on today. And uh, be sure to join Discord. Um, bang Discord in the chat and come and join us and hang out with uh, with Bolt and the rest of the crew. And uh, we'll see you on Tuesday or see you on yep. Friday. Have a, great, have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everyone. See you later, everybody. Bye. Bye.